Hi, Assalamualaikum. Welcome back to my English lesson uh, with me, Madam Mona Afina Umwati. Okay, so basically we are still in Unit 1 um, and we are now going to take a look at the grammar and also vocabulary on page 15 and also page 16. Okay, so let's take a look at the grammar components first. For today, we are going to take a look at past simple, used to, and be used to or get used to. Okay, so when, why, and how are we going to use these grammar components? So let's take a look at uh, the revision of past simple. We have learned this since your primary school. We have regular verbs and also irregular verbs. Okay, so when we want to write a past simple, basically we just have to add ed to the end of the verb. Okay, for example, we have the word walk, walk, cry, cried, bake, bake. Okay, while well, for irregular verbs, uh, for those irregular verbs, there will be changes in the spelling. Like you will see, it becomes saw, go becomes went, and it becomes ate. Okay, so you have to know the difference. Okay, you have to know your irregular verbs. So how are you going to write them in past tense? And I also would like you to pay attention on the do verb. Okay, a do verb, it is always written as did. Okay, regardless if it is singular or plural, we are going to use the same one. Um, for past simple, basically we don't have to uh, know uh, it's in a singular verb or is it in a singular noun. But for be verbs, yes, we still have to consider it. Okay, um, for the word is it becomes was the b verb r becomes were and m becomes was so you have to pay attention on this all right okay uh, so now let's go to the next one how are we going to use the structure used to the phrase used to okay uh, used to or didn't used to to do something Okay, we basically use um, the structure used to when we want to talk about something that we did not regularly, we did regularly in the past, but not do it now. Okay, something that we have done before, but not these days. All right, the second situation is when we want to talk about past situations or states that have changed, something that had happened in the past. Okay, what were the situations before? Now let's take a look at the examples. Here are the examples. Okay, number one for the past um, habits. Okay, um, what we did, we usually did before. Okay, I used to wake up at 5 a.m. before. Okay, before here shows the past time. Okay, so that's why we use the structure used to the phrase used to. Or uh, the second example. The second example actually it comes from your textbook. Okay, when mobile phones were invented, they did not used to be small. They used to be big and heavy. Okay, so that is the situation in the past. Now, let's take a look at be used to. The structure be used to. Okay, uh, followed by a noun, a pronoun, or a gerund. Okay, so we have positive form and also negative form. Okay, the positive is is r or m followed by used to followed by any of those words uh, any of these words and uh, for the negative form in, we, we simply put the the word not to it a to the b verb isn't aren't am not used to okay so positive and negative forms of b used to how you're going to write them Uh, and when are we going to use this structure? We basically use this structure to express that a situation is not new or strange, something that you are get um, that you do normally, you did normally. Ah, uh, 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 yes. The difference between used to and be used to, um, be used to is in the past form, while the used to only is in past form. Okay, so be used to is the present, used to is the past form. Okay, uh, it is also used when you have experienced it many times. Something that you do, uh, uh, what you do normally lah. Okay, you experience it for many times. So, what are the examples? Okay, I have the positive one and I have the negative one. And this is the example from your textbook. Okay, example one. 
for the present form, we are used to Google Classroom. We are used to Google Classroom. Okay, we is plural, so we use the plural verb a. Uh. And then for the negative one, I am not used to. Okay, we put simply at the word not in between the be verb and also the structure used to. I'm not used to getting up early these days. And then the third example from your textbook, I know you are not used to using the menu on your new phone yet. Alright, so we are done with the examples. We are done with be used to. Now let's take a look at the last grammar component, uh, which is the structure get used to. When are we going to use the structure get used to? Um, basically, we use them to express that an action or a situation becomes less strange or new or becomes more comfortable. Okay, we are getting accustomed to it. We are getting familiar to it okay, in doing something. So how are, you, how are we going to write the structure? There are three forms basically uh, in present form. In present, uh, in past, and also in future form. Okay, to write it in the present form, it is basically you put the be verb first. <coughs> Pardon me. Excuse me. Be verb. Okay, is our m getting used to followed by the structure used to. Okay, if it is, in, if you want it in past form, you change the word get into plot followed by the structure used to and then for future form it is basically writing the word will followed by get used to okay so three different forms okay three different ways for you to write get used to <coughs> excuse me and here are the example okay example one um, for the, the present for the present form Many teachers are getting used to virtual teaching. Okay, so teachers... <coughs> Excuse me, I'm not sure what's wrong with my throat. Okay, many teachers, are, many teachers are getting used to virtual teaching. Okay, example number two for past form. Okay, I didn't like marking essays online, but I got used to it. Okay, previously, okay, then I didn't like it. So this is in past, so that's why we use got used to. And then number three for future form, you will soon get used to using the new phone. Okay, will here is telling you that it is in the future, and soon is an adverb. All right. So we are done, basically done with grammar. Now let's take a look at the vocabulary on page sixteen. Uh, <clears throat> for task A, I'm not going to uh, explain much further on task A. Uh, I just want you to give a wild guess of the meaning of the words now in your textbook. Uh, if you really have no idea what are the meaning of those words, but I believe that you are familiar with And uh, if you really have no idea, just try to look up for the meaning uh, online, okay? You can just Google for the words. Alright, so my focus is on the word formation or the derived words. Okay, on task B. Okay, uh, just like in Bahasa Melayu, uh, in Malay language, we also have what we call as imbuhan and uh, affixes in English language. We have the prefixes, we have the suffixes. Okay, example of prefixes here, we have on, this, means uncomfortable display at uh, this uh, this uh, disadvantage uh, miscommunication cooperate okay and many more okay and we have suffixes sadly uh, careless uh, information and many other words that we can derive by using either a prefix or a suffix but for today, we are going to take a look at three suffixes and those three suffixes are iron, Asian and also mint. And in English language, um, each suffix or each affix, uh, there is prefix, there is a meaning to it. Okay, iron is actually uh, showing that it is a process, a state or a result. Like the word intention. 
P, the verb intent, and it will I or N becomes an intention. Intention is a noun. Okay, you see there is a change of the word class. From a verb, it becomes a noun. Okay, Asian is showing a state or a quality of being. Okay, example here I have inform, which is a verb. You add with Asian, it becomes information, which is also a noun. And we have the word, uh, the suffix ment. An action or a state, example, um, the word develop, it's a verb, added with the suffix men, and it becomes a development, which is also a noun. So you can see uh, by the use of, by adding a suffix to certain word, okay, for example, a verb, it, the word class can change okay, from a verb to a noun so that is how we form certain words in english okay by using suffixes all right so that should be for today so the next one uh, this is for my class basically they have to do their task in your google classroom but that should be it my explanation for today on uh, some grammar components and also the vocabulary on suffixes that's it bye thank you for